Up until this point, we've talked about demand and supply individually. Now we're going to think about how they come together, like we said before when we were introducing the supply and demand model, to determine the prices that you'll see in a free market. If you remember, we charted demand and supply along the same set of axes, namely price and quantity in both cases, because then we can actually put them together and say what happens when these two forces interact. Here, when we're talking about demand and supply individually, we're saying how would either of these quantities react to these hypothetical prices that we're setting up here? Now we're ready to answer the question of rather than just responses to a bunch of hypothetical prices, we want to understand what price will actually exist in that market. To talk about market equilibrium, what we're really referring to is this concept here of a steady state. If you think about how markets work from a logistical perspective, basically what happens is firms decide to make a product, they decide how much they want to sell that product for and how much of it to make. They then see how many consumers show up to buy the product, and then when they have the opportunity and the information to do so, they adjust their prices accordingly and try again. So this steady state is the point at which everybody's happy and there's no incentive for the firms to change price in one direction or the other. And then once we reach the equilibrium, that price will remain constant until something else moves to shift the market. Finding the equilibrium price and quantity graphically is very simple. We just want to find where supply and demand intersect. Our equilibrium condition mathematically is then that at equilibrium, the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied are the same. What that means is that this equilibrium price, everybody that wants to buy something can and there's nothing left over. Rather than just make you take on faith that economic equilibrium is where supply and demand meet, let's go through an example to show why that basically has to be the case. Consider these equations here. We have quantity demanded is equal to 42 minus 6 times the consumer's price, and quantity supplied is equal to negative 8 plus 4 times what the producer gets. We have a graph here. Now let's say that our price is at 3. At a price of 3, you can see by plugging that in for price in the supply equation, the quantity supplied at that price is 4. However, if you plug that into the demand equation, the demand for this item is 30. So our demand far outpaces our supply, and we basically have 30 customers chasing after four units of this item. So you're going to have people really waiting in line, not able to get what it is that they want. We can think intuitively about what happens when there's a shortage. Usually what happens is a combination of two things. One, in the short term, people oftentimes buy up what they can and then resell it for a higher price. You can think about things like ticket scalping or when the Nintendo Wii first came out, you have people buying them up and then reselling them for above the manufacturer's suggested retail price on Craigslist and eBay and things like that. So whenever there's a shortage, the price is actually going to get bid up, either informally, like I just described, or formally, meaning the producers are going to see this and say, oh wow, we didn't produce enough. We could actually command a higher price for our item. And commanding a higher price for that item, well then if we can do that, we're going to want to produce more. So whenever there's a shortage, that's going to lead to upward pressure on prices and you can see prices are going to move in this direction here. If we want to quantify the shortage, we can just say, well, how far to the right of supply is our demand? And quantitatively here, the shortage can just be measured as 30 minus 4, or 26. Now let's think about what happens if our price is higher than the equilibrium price. As an example here, it says, suppose that the price of our item is now 6. Well, at a price of 6, we can again find out what supply and demand are. And we'll notice if we plug 6 into this equation here, we get a demand of 6. And if we plug 6 into our supply equation, we get a supply of 16. So now we say, well, producers are supplying 16 units of this item, but at this price, only 6 people want to buy. 
So we have some left over, and companies are going to end up with this in inventory. They're not going to be able to get rid of it at the current price. So what do they do? Again, thinking about this intuitively, companies can't sell things, they generally put them on sale. So we can think about that's what happens in response to a surplus. Think about companies putting products on sale, they'll also realize next time they have the opportunity to make a pricing decision, hey, we can't command that high of a price, and there will be some combination of lowering of the price and then realizing that at that lower price it's not as attractive to produce as much as they did before, and we'll start moving again down towards the equilibrium price. So we'll see pressure on prices that will push the market in this direction here. Quantitatively, we can say that our surplus is again the quantity on the right here, the bigger one, minus the quantity on the left, or just 16 minus 6, or 10. So let's summarize what we just said. We said if we set the price too low, then we have a demand that's larger than our supply, we have people waiting in line, we have a shortage. This shortage causes upward pressure on prices. On the other hand, if the market sets prices too high, we have more supply than we have demand, and we have inventory piling up, we have firms wanting to produce more than there are buyers. So when you have this sort of situation, we have a surplus, and that surplus causes firms to put things on sale and learn to not make as much and charge as high of a price next time. Graphically, we can say the situation looks like this. That at all prices below this meeting point here, there's going to be a shortage, which drives prices up. And at all prices above this meeting point, you're going to have a surplus, which drives prices down. Which then brings us to our point over here, where our equilibrium price is where quantity demanded and quantity supplied come together. And the reason that this is, is because this is the only price where there's no upward or downward pressure because there is neither a surplus nor a shortage. The question that's often asked is, well, if this is our equilibrium condition, meaning our steady state condition, how quickly, in general, do markets reach that equilibrium? And the answer is that it depends on the particular market that you're talking about, and generally is a function of how much information updating there is. For example, in the stock market, we reach equilibrium prices very quickly, because there's always an influx of information and it's always very easy to change prices. There may be other markets where prices are more set or information doesn't come as quickly or as freely, where it takes a while for the market to figure out what its steady state is. 